Hello and welcome. Um, I wanted to share an interesting tool with you guys. Um, as you know that I'm very focused on education and teaching and learning. And one of the challenges in medical education and probably every education has been writing and getting good practice questions. So we have looked for question banks. I remember when I was doing my uh, USMLE, when I was doing uh, residency, in-service examination, board examination, we were always looking for good quality questions to try to practice and, and also learn, you know, and lately I've been realizing that the doing questions has becoming a better and better way of learning instead of reviewing articles or long chapters and textbooks and so on and so forth. So this is an interesting uh, tool that I wanted to share that I have uh, uh, discovered and have worked with. Uh, it's called quizmd.ai. It's completely brand new. And what they are saying is that you can generate USMLE style uh, multiple choice questions from any document that you upload and, and are providing various reasons why this will be very useful and helpful. So I would, uh, they've given some examples here which really look a pretty good example with the stem and lead and examples. And then they're saying you can click to generate reveal answers. So let's see if they works. Yep, they give an explanation. They give the right answer and name and pick disease and why that's the right answer and why others are not right answers for these questions. It's a pretty well-designed questions and they have used a specific document to do this right example in saying that you can actually use your own document uh, to generate your own questions uh, and then seed back. So let's just jump right into it. I'm going to try to log in. I will use my uh, Google login um, to get in. And it looks pretty simple and straightforward. I don't have any history right now. There's a place to just upload document. They have given some example documents to try out. And I've been trying out some of these example documents which are related to neurology, so which is um, something that I do. Uh, and then they have a place to give feedback. So let's test it out. I'm gonna try one of their documents to test out. Let's do flashcards four. So I clicked on the flashcard four and it generated some questions for me. Looks like it generated six questions. Uh, there's a date and time. There's a way to show answer. There is a carousal view uh, compared to, this is kind of a continuous scrolling. Uh, and then the questions are there, options, five options. There is a place to reveal answers. Uh, let me just go to the carousal view, see how that looks different. So now there's a question and then I can click next and get to the next question and click back and get to the previous question. So I'll just go to the scroll view. So there's an error to give a, uh, a feedback on the question. I see one in front of each one, and then I see a button to export uh, these questions in Word document. Um, and so let's do some of these questions. A 68-year-old man present in the clinic with his daughter. She reports that her father has recently been having difficulty naming familiar objects and sometimes put objects in odd places like the refrigerator. So some kind of cognitive impairment in a 68-year-old ma male. His medical history includes hypertension, hyperlipidemia, nothing specific. Neural examination is unremarkable. What's the most likely diagnosis? So not knowing anything else, uh, in 68-year-old man, just statistically speaking, the answer should be Alzheimer's disease. But because it's a problem with placing familiar objects in unusual odd places, that's not a typical presentation of Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's typically uh, um, amnestic, meaning that uh, recall short-term memory is the issue. So this is more of a visual-spatial. So visual-spatial could be frontotemporal. Uh, vascular is usually subcortical dementia. Lewy body can also be visual-spatial. And then uh, cerebral autosomal dominant arteriopathy, again, would probably be vascular or subcortical kind of presentation. So I say the answer would probably be D, maybe B, B or D, likely not C, and definitely not A and E. Let's see what the answer is. The answer is C. Alzheimer's, so I was completely long, wrong here. Let's see what the explanation here is. This progressive memory impairment, although, well, naming, difficulty naming, and sometimes objects in odd places, I'm not sure. But difficulty with language, naming objects is Alzheimer's, so I didn't think about it that way. Uh, disorientation and placing objects in unusual places is also Alzheimer's related. And given his age and significant neurological signs, it's likely diagnosed Alzheimer's. So that was definitely a curveball. A difficult uh, question for me, I would say that um, my feedback will be down to say that uh, why is neurological examination unremarkable, right? So that is something that I will not be happy with. Let's look at the next question. 74-year-old woman is brought to the emergency department with new onset of difficulty with calculation, writing, and inability to identify her fingers. 
so finger and omir difficulty naming her fingers brain brain cats can shows a hypodensity in one of her brain hemispheres this condition most likely localized to which area of the brain so difficulty naming object i think is temporal lobe uh, d um, so let's see oh the answer is parietal lobe and this is jerschman syndrome which is agraphia calculia finger agnosia and left right disorientation including a dominant parietal lobe dysfunction yeah that makes sense because there is calculation writing and inability Uh, so this looks like a good question here. Question three is a 16-year-old girl is presenting to the clinic with a recurrent episodes of falls on examination. She has scoliosis and impaired position and vibration sense. There is an absence of deep tendon flexes in the lower extremities. Generic, genetic testing showing GAA triplet repeat. What is the most likely diagnosis? So GAA is the answer here. It's a trinucleotide repeat disorder. GAA is the problem. She's 16-year-old, falls. scoliosis impaired position vibration i think this is a friedrich ataxia if i'm right c yeah so friedrich ataxia autosomal recessive g a triple repeat chromosome 9 clinical features of progressive gait ataxia reflexia and lower extremities and positive babinski all right let's do one more 6 month old baby boy starts having multiple episodes of clonic seizures that stop by a time he's 6 months old uh and genetic testing reveals mutation of chromosome 20 All right, I that is uh, not something I can tell you off the top of my head. Maybe benign familial neonatal convulsion because it stopped at six months of age. Uh, not juvenile absence, not vestibular knocks and early infantile. Yeah, I think it sounds benign. Uh, yep, the answer is C, benign familial non neonatal convulsion. I didn't knew that there was an association chromosome twenty, which is KCN. Q two gene. So very interesting. So very high quality, complicated questions. Now it has an option to generate more. So these were six questions so far. Let's generate some more and see what that look like. Um, so it's generating some more. It put a line there that all these questions are old, although some have still not been revealed or done. Uh, and then on fifth September eleven thirty one, I am I'm generating some more questions. It, the circle is going on. Um, I think I can start a new while it's generating those questions from that. So now it's created a new one. Let me actually go to my desktop and uh, pick a document here uh, for, uh, to test it out rather than using their document. So I'm looking for a document I can use. It says I can use PDF, DocX PPT, PDF PPT, DocX, and RTF and Office documents. So let me see what. documents i have available all right here's a document i have for bart botulinum toxin or botox it was something that i do so i'm going to upload it here so it's uploaded it's now generating question let me go back and see if those uh, board four questions have been generated that more that we were trying nope it's still generating so it takes a while to generate these questions i think it's probably using a large language model on the background to try to generate these questions Uh, so let me pause the video here. See how long it takes to generate these questions before I come back. All right, it took it a couple of minutes, uh, uh, almost exactly two minutes to generate those questions. It generated three more questions related to the first document, the board review flashcards, and they look pretty good. Um, and then it also generated questions related to the document that I uploaded, and it again took two minutes and generated three questions. Um, Let's try to do these three questions from my document, which is the Botox overview document. So, 52-year-old woman presents with recurrent severe headaches. She has tried multiple treatments, including several NSAIDs and triptans, but her migraines persist. The physician decides to try botulinum toxin injections as a treatment option for her migraine. Which of the following statements is most likely mechanism how botulinum toxin could provide relief to her condition? Uh, it won't destroy pain receptors. Will increase the release? No, nope, not increase. Will decrease the release of acetylcholine. Lysosomal degradation, vessel carrying pain similar factor. That's probably possibly true. Uh, not if, yeah. So it will prevent the fusion of the vesicles to release acetylcholine. So D should be the answer, and that's correct. Um, so it's a good question, I would say, uh, for practice and learning. Question two looks a very brief and short one in the same patient above. So continuing, for how long the effect of botulinum would last in providing relief? So it probably would last. uh one to two months probably b c three to five months i think it's usually two to three months starts wearing off so may, but you know complete wearing off can last five months so that's right typically starts five to seven days after peak seven months typical usual duration is two to three months 
but the close uh, but the reversal of the period can can not be known blah 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 yeah so that c is probably acceptable what is the advantage of botulinum being produced as an enzymatically activated double chain molecule improves the immunity of the body against botulism um, enhance the ability to toxin destroy cell produce enzyme ability to bind to cell i think it's c and yeah, that's right uh, c is the answer so good i mean i think this tool looks great i could spend more time and generate some more questions and test them out uh, or do review them for learning um i think they, there's a great opportunity for here for me to make more videos where i do, docu- upload certain specific document related, related to a particular topic and just attempt those questions and see what i get right and see what i get wrong and why i get them right and wrong and that could be a learning uh, in itself and of course i can use these questions to test out my students uh, in various courses that i prepare in the medical school and for international education so try it out see what you think about quiz md uh i think the address is quizmd.ai uh and let me know what you think in the comments below